I'm here with Charles Campbell, who's the broodmare manager of Lane's End Farm, located right outside of Lexington, Kentucky. So Charles, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and how many mares you're in control of here at the farm. Uh, so at the moment we're pretty quiet. We've got a barn full behind us of sale mares. Uh, they're being prepped for the November sale. Uh, and then we'll have a hundred and around 130, 135 foaling mares for next season and get up to about 180 mares in total. Wow. So obviously that's part of your job here is foaling that many mares every year. So can you describe a little bit of what your life is like when it's foaling season? Uh, foaling season entails a lot of early mornings and late afternoons and you're up all night foaling. Uh, we have a great team. I have a great assistant, Jen, and Todd, the assistant farm manager, and Peter. They all come out and they'll help. So I'm not foaling every mare every night, which is, we're fortunate to have such a great team. And then we have students come out who want to learn as well. Got a great group of staff behind me that also come out. So at every foaling, there can be four or five people wanting to learn uh, so they can then step in and do the job when the time requires. So obviously, with the thoroughbred industry, breeding and foaling isn't just you take the mare, you breed her, we're good to go. There's a lot of science that goes into it, a lot of research. Um, do you think that it's been much more intensive than you originally thought it was going to be when you started working in the thoroughbred industry? Yeah, I started uh, at Lane's End and did the yearlings and did the stallions and thought that the breeding side of the operation was literally the 30 seconds they spent in the shed. Now I have a much greater appreciation for the mares and the vets especially and the research that goes into it to ensure that these mares get in foal on one cover, they stay in foal. Um, MRLS was such a huge impact to the industry, you know, the advance in science that are applicable to our area of expertise it is huge. It really is. And it's up there with humans. Very true. We, um, we just recently went to Haggard and obviously learned their side of it, of the kind of the extensive amount of things that we do to keep these horses healthy. Hyperbaric chambers, the MRI machines. Um, is there anything you guys have here that you use for the rehabilitation of injuries or keeping these horses at their top shape? Can you give us a play by play of what you do to get these mares ready for the sales? Yeah, so they'll be up at night and you can see their blankets are hanging out. When it gets below 60 degrees, they'll get their pajamas put on so they keep a nice coat, stay warm. Then they'll go out at 7 o'clock in the morning, we'll come in, take the blankets off, turn them out. They'll go out all day and then come in for sort of their beauty therapy session in the afternoon where you can see Alexis and Marcelo are grooming them now. We curry them, get all the mud off them, pick out their feet, paint their feet with oil to trap the moisture in their feet, making their feet healthy. They'll get fed each horse on an individual ration, depending on how much weight they need to be carrying for them to look good, but also be healthy. Their feed is all organic. Uh, so it's the top quality when it comes to the corn, the molasses, everything is organic. Then they'll get the alfalfa. They have that ad lib, um, good fiber, keeps the gut moving. And that's about it really. They in the warm, in their stables, in a lot of straw overnight, then they go back out the next day. So it's a, it's really quite a pampered lifestyle. They're staying at one of the top hotels. And obviously as the broodmare manager, your primary care for most of the year is the well-being of these mares. But obviously come foaling season, the little bundles of love are coming out as well. So you're also worried about them and taking care of them, nourishing them. Has there been any specific foal that just stands out in your mind that just really um, captured you and that you're just really honored to be a part of their upbringing? Yeah, there was one foal in particular and it didn't start off that we were honored and really excited. He came out and he was small. He wasn't very correct in front and, you know, he got the nickname in the barn, Forrest Gump. And, you know, we all thought, gosh, you know, will he be a riding pony? Will he be... Anyway, he grew up to be shared belief. It really taught us that you just can't write them off just because they don't look like they're going to be a grade one winner. It means nothing until they get out on the track and they get a chance to showcase themselves and just show you how much heart they've got. And obviously aftercare has become such an important aspect of the thoroughbred industry. We have so many organizations that are helping us with this. Um, are you a big proponent of that? Do you, I, I know you grew up with horses riding. Like horses to you are not just broodmares and foals, right? Yeah, no, I'm, I think it's great that we're starting to microchip these horses because it allows us to track them and track them back to the source and not hold people accountable, but make people think and make them more aware of what they're doing 
and the end result. And we have two uh, retirement fields of our own. And we just added a very large bunch of really top quality mares of, and they're the dams of stallions around here. And the owners have said, you know, they don't own us, owe us anything. Let's go ahead and retire them. Let's not leave it till it's too late. And you know, they're sort of getting too old. So that we've got mares that have been retired now for eight, nine years, living out in the field with the same girls. And every year we go through them twice a year, get their teeth checked and the vets come and give them a full physical and make sure that they're going to be healthy enough to make it through the winter. They're all blanketed, fed, and, and I like that. That's why I like it here. Yeah. Because the owners always do the right thing.